All right, we're going to start, start talking about section 11.1. What we're going to talk about in 11.1 are quadratic equations and how to what's called complete the square. You might not even know what that means yet, but I promise you will in just a little while. So quadratic equations and completing the square. Okay, firstly, before we go any further, I've got to kind of tell you what a quadratic equation is. When you hear that, that word quadratic, you hear that word quadratic, I know that the quad, it makes it seem like it's four, but the quadratic equation for us means any equation where the power the largest power of some variable is 2. So like anything with an x squared in it, if that's the largest power, that's a quadratic equation. Of course, it has to have an equal sign that makes it an equation. But a quadratic equation is a second degree equation. What second degree means is that the largest power is 2. Not 3, not 4, not 5. The largest power is 2. Not 1, but 2. So quadratic means power... Two. This is where you fill in the blank. Quadratic means power... Two. two. Okay, very good. All four of you who are with me today. Well, if you really think about it, we've literally been dealing with quadratic equations since the first day of class in here. Literally been dealing with it since the first day of class because every quadratic equation can be represented as ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Have you seen those since the first day of class? Yep. Yeah, in fact that's when we took our break from c.1 to go to c.4 to learn how to factor because that's the only way we were able to deal with those things. Are you with me folks? Mm -hmm. So you've been dealing with these by using the diamond method. Sometimes with the extra step if there's an a factoring them and solving them. Raise your hand if you remember how to do that. If you didn't raise your hand right there, you can go back and remember how to do that. Okay? Go back and look at that. I told you a long time ago, though, that there were some things that you can't factor. Some of these problems you cannot solve by factoring they don't work. We're going to learn today, and we're going to learn tomorrow and Friday, how to do these things without factoring, so that we can universally solve any quadratic equation. Would you like to learn how to do that? Sure. That way you're not just stuck with factoring. It's kind of cool. Well, we're going to start kind of, kind of, kind of down here. We're not, we're not going to worry about equations with this term right now. We're going to build up to that. First, I want to look at what happens when I take somewhat of a simple example. Let's do x squared equals 9. x squared equals 9. Now, I'm going to show you two ways that we can, we can solve this problem. One is the old way. One's going to be a new way. Are you with me? So old way. The old way you'd solve this is realize, oh, this is an x squared. I can get everything to one side and zero on the other side and then factor. True? How do I get everything to one side here? Okay, so I'd subtract 9 and this would become x squared minus 9 equals 0. True? What's that? Difference of squares. You all should be just Johnny on the spot with different squares, right? So x squared minus 9, you say, oh, all right, this would be x plus 3 x minus 3 equals 0. So far so good? All right. And you go, okay, well I'm not quite done yet. I would do x plus 3 equals 0. x minus 3 equals 0. Therefore, x would equal negative 3. x would equal positive 3. How many solutions did we get? What was our largest power in our equation? That is not a coincidence. The largest power in your equation dictates how many solutions you're going to get. If that was a power 3, you'd be getting 3 solutions. Power 4, you'd be getting 4 solutions. This is a power 2, you're going to be getting 2 solutions all the time. In our case, that's 3 and negative 3. How many of you feel okay with the old way? Okay, that, that's old. We've, we've done that. Now we're going to look at a different way to look at this.
let's say we kept it x squared equals 9. So in other words, something squared equals a constant. Now using what we learned the last like few weeks, probably three weeks here, can you tell me what operation will undo a square? We'll do that. Yeah, we knew that a square root and square, that those are inverse operations, right? They undo each other. We also knew that I could take a square root of both sides of an equation. Or I could square both sides. Or in other words, I can take both sides of an equation. Do I have an equation here? Both sides of an equation are the same power. Remember that square roots are actually a power. Square roots are a one-half power, right? So if I take square root of both sides, that, that's going to be equivalent. So this says, all right, well, what if I took the square root of both sides of the equation. Look at the board here with me, folks. What happens on this side of the equation? How much do I get? X. X. That's what I want, right? What's the square root of 9? 3. 3. Wait. Uh-oh. Something happened. Do you see what happened? How many solutions did we get over here? How many solutions did we get over here? That's a problem. Why is that a problem? Well, that's a problem because we lost half our solutions. It's like going to the bank and half your money is gone. This is the money, right? <laughs> we want, even though it's negative, we want the money. We want both those solutions. How do I make this one come out like this one? We're going to talk about that right now. If you think about our original example, x squared equals 9, if you just think about the solutions, you know that 3 is going to work, right? Because 3 squared is 9. You also know that negative 3 is going to work because negative 3, when I square it, what happens to that negative? Are you with me? Negative 3 times negative 3, th that negative is gone because when we square something, the operation negative is eliminated because you're multiplying a negative times a negative, that becomes a positive. So when you're doing a square root, when you're doing a square root of both sides of an equation, what's happening here is that you are actually, if you don't, if you don't, uh, Sorry, if you don't factor. You're actually eliminating one of those negative solutions. Because when you square something, you're saying both a positive and a negative of the same number are going to work. Because when I square something, that negative goes away. It becomes positive. I'm not sure if you're okay with that. So in order to show that, in order to get both of our solutions, what we do down here, this is probably the, one of the most important things we're going to teach today. You've got to put both a plus and a minus there. If you put, put both a plus and a minus, that looks like a positive, negative in this case. That's saying that I'm going to have two solutions. I'm going to have positive 3 and I'm going to have negative 3. So in our case, when we write it out, we say x equals, yes, positive 3, but x also equals the negative version of that number, negative 3. Now do I have both my solutions like I thought? Yeah. So, what are you going to do every time you take a square root? What are you going to put in front of that square root? Notice we don't need it on the left-hand side. Okay, we only need it on one side. We just need it on our, our constant side. This is already taken care of. X is our variable. So, <coughs> every time you take a square root, you must include plus minus. I hope you'll feel okay with that. Now, you might be wondering, well, Mr. Leonard, why didn't <laughs> we've been taking square roots for like a chapter? Why didn't we do that before? Well, before, you actually never did take the square root. It was given to you, wasn't it? It was already on the paper. You didn't put it on the paper. It, you didn't invent it for your problem. All right? It was already there. It was already done to that point. So if you put a square root on your paper, you must have the plus minus. Well, we're going to write that down. If you take the square root, that means it wasn't there before, and you put it on your paper, you must also have a plus minus right in front of that. Write that down. If you take the square root, you must have plus minus. What this does, this gives you your two solutions. If you don't have it, let's, let's ignore this again. If you ignored that and you ignored that, you'd only get one solution. you get positive three. You wouldn't get negative three. Do you have the problem right? No, you don't even have it half right, really. You, you're missing the whole point. You're missing the whole point there. So when you include the plus minus, you're going to get how many solutions? Two. two. One positive, one negative. So you must have the plus minus. This is what gives you the two solutions.
Let's try a couple more. Are you ready? That's what's pretty okay. You probably do that one in your head, right? You just think about that. Three and negative three. Let's work up to some ones that you might not be able to do in your head. Okay, so x squared equals 20. Now, in our case over here, let's look at the board again. In our case over here, this was a very nice problem because you could do it two ways. This way, you could subtract 9, and we knew how to factor difference of squares. This is pretty easy. We get 3 and negative 3. Will a difference of squares work with this problem? If you subtract 20, you're going to have x squared minus 20. Can you factor x squared minus 20? Well, you can, but you're going to have some square roots up there. It's not going to be very easy to factor that. This one's pretty easy because you just did 3 and minus 3. That gives you 9. That's, that's great. But over here, we go, okay, x squared. If I do this, uh, x squared minus 20 equals 0. I go, oh, okay, x squared is a square. 20, is 20 a square of a number? No. So I, I can't do x plus something, x minus something. Can you think of something times itself that gives you 20? No. No, we did it. Do you see that we're going to need a different way to go about this problem? Mm -hmm. You guys awake today? Mm -hmm. All right. Hope so. So this way, not, not, so, not so bueno for us. Not so much. However, we still do have x squared equals to a number. Can you undo x squared? Mm -hmm. What undoes that, folks? Give me a little bit more participation out of you guys. Some of you look like zombies. I know it's just past Halloween, but get out of the Halloween mode. Let's go. A square root will undo this. If I take a square root of the left hand side, is that good enough? No, nope, yeah, both, both sides, okay. People on the right side of the room, does that look good to, to you? Yes. Just like that? Yeah. That's what I mean. Wait, what am I? I'm forgetting something plus huge right now. Why, why do I need plus or minus? <laughs> if I don't have plus or minus, I'm going to get how many solutions? Yeah. How many am I supposed to get? Two. That's the biggest part of your day, right there. It's the littlest part, but it's the biggest part. Of course I get x. On the right-hand side, I get plus or minus the square root of 20. Does that show you two solutions? Yeah. Now, are, are, we, are we done yet? Probably not if I'm asking that question. Can you simplify the square root of 20? Yep, 4 and 5. So 4 times 5, that's 20. You're going to get 2 root 5. You with me on 2 root 5? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to show those steps anymore. That's up to you. I mean, we've, we've been doing that for a while now. So x equals plus or minus 2 root 5. Mm -hmm. Our two solutions are 2. Please write this. Please write like this. Right, what, we're, what we're not doing, we're not making it 2 plus root 5 and 2 minus root 5. Do you notice that? Mm -hmm. That's not the way we write that. Write that down and then cross that out. Okay? Honestly, because I have a lot of people who do this. They mistake where that plus or minus goes. What we're doing, this plus and minus, that's in front of your solution here. You actually do get 2 root 5. That means positive 2 root 5 and negative 2 root 5. Those are your solutions. The positive version of this little piece and the negative version of this little piece. 2 root 5 and negative 2 root 5 version, if you're okay with this so far. Now I'm going to have you practice one right away just so you get the hang of it. Let's do x squared equals 18. Go for it. It's warming up here now, huh? Get some math going on, some blood going on. Oh, yeah. Did you get it? Mm -hmm. yep. 
Are you going to do it by subtracting 18 from both sides? No. So we're learning something new because before, I mean, I kind of pounded this in your head. I said, before, whenever you have an x squared, you get everything to one side and zero on the other side, right? Now we have options. Can you do that in this problem? No, not really. You have to know the problem, right? If this was like a 25, if that was like a 36, a 49, no problem. Yeah, you could do that. You could subtract it and then factor it. But when you have something like 18, it's not a difference of squares anymore. That's not really going to work. We had to have another way. The other way is we're going to get rid of a square with a square root. We know that's possible because a square and a square root are inverse operations. The only thing you have to be careful of is two things right here. First, make sure you don't just do it to one side. It's an equation after all, right? Equations mean what you do to one side, you've got to do the other. So I at least need, need that. But that's not good enough for us. Explain why not. Plus minus. You need two answers that. Okay, so we are going to get our two solutions somehow, right? You're not just going to give me one solution. That'd be not even halfway there, really. So that plus minus, that's absolutely crucial. That's saying that I understand that when I square a number, it's taking a negative and making it positive, taking a positive and keeping it positive. That's our two solutions we're getting out of that. So you should have on your paper x equals plus or minus square root of 18. Raise your hand if you, understand, if you got that far. Good. You understand the, the key concept then? You understand that you take a square root of both sides and you include the plus minus. After that, it goes back to our chapter 10 stuff. Can you simplify it? Well, of course you can simplify it. We're going to split up 18 as 9 times 2. If we take the square root of 9, we're going to get 3. So your answer, I made that a little bit too, too close there. Your answer when you simplify this is going to be 3 root 2. Also, I want you to get in the habit, this is, this is technically appropriate, plus or minus 3 root 2. That, that's two solutions, right? Write out your solutions, though, because when you get to the next section, you're going to have to do that anyway. So I'd like you to write out, just so you're aware that you're actually getting two solutions. This is not one solution right here. This is not just your answer. There's two solutions here. You have 3 square root 2 and negative 3 square root 2. Write both of those out. Okay, on a show of hands, how many people feel okay with what we just talked about? Okay, if you're not raising your hand, I'm assuming you're, you're not okay. Are we okay with this or no? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, good deal. So we, we now have a couple options here. If we have a perfect square, we can, we can get everything to one side, factor it. We can do that. We know how to factor things. But now we have another option. We get a square root, we can take a square root of, I'm uh, sorry, a square, we can take a square root of both sides and solve it that way. Still get our two solutions. That's great. What are we going to do on that problem? Does this look the same as the first two problems we did? No, no over here, we, we already had the square root on one side and a number on the other side. What are we going to do Factor here? Pull out a five. You could pull out a 5 here. You could do that. That's right. But then what would you do? <laughs> huh? Isolate the x. Isolate the x. Why would we want to isolate the x? Let me ask you a question. Can you take a square root of this thing right now? Do you want to do that? Do you want to do this? Does that look good to you? Oh, that would, that would suck right there, right? Because there's nothing you can do right, right here on the side. You don't, you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. Why were these nice? Look at, look at the board. Why were these nice? The x squared was by itself, right? Because if the x squared was by itself, I know, oh, yeah, it's square root. But if it's not by itself, can I, can I take a square root of both those? Because I'll tell you what, right now, you can't split this up and take a square root of both those numbers. It's impossible. It doesn't work. So this might not be the way to go, because if you do that, well, you're stuck. Instead, I want to make this one look like these ones. If this one looks like these ones, then we have no problem. Do you agree? Okay, so what's the key then? The, the note you're going to write down. Isolate. Say what, Lily? Move the 55 to the other side. Great. Why are we trying to do that? So they can be separated. So they can be separated. What do we want on one side and what do we want on the other side? X squared and a number. Great. We want X squared and a number. That's called isolation. Right? We want to isolate the X squared first. <coughs> Isolate the square. Ironically, this is the same thing happens at every party. The square. <laughs> 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 
I'm such a square because I just used that joke. <laughs> so 5x squared minus 55 equals 0, not good enough. We don't want that. We want to add 55 to both sides. Sure we do. Because what we're trying to do is get the x squared off to itself. Now, I've got to tell you, you can have a problem on a test just like this. If you remember this, it's going to be pretty easy. If you don't, you're going to make a mistake right here. Right? Because right now, you're all pretty, well, yeah, I know how to add 55. Yeah, of course you do. You're in the squats, right? But right now is a problem, well, it's a part where people make a huge mistake on this problem. They go, oh, well, the x squared's isolated. Now I can take a square root. And they go, oh, okay, if I take a square root, here's a mistake. I'm going to show it to you. I'll show you the mistake. People do this. People do this, which that is possible. You can do that. However, their next step is the mistake part. The next step is they go, oh, well, this goes to 5x. And this goes to plus or minus square root of 55. Do you see the mistake? If that looks right to you, well, there's an issue going on. If it looks wrong to you, what's wrong? Simplify it down. So if the 55, that, that's fine. This is, this is appropriate on this side. However, this side, something happened. You see, you took a square root of 5x squared. Now, while the x squared gives you x, what's the square root of 5? It's not 5. So technically, what you should have around this is a square root of 5, right? Instead of actually dealing with that, why don't I make it easier? Instead of having the square root of 5x equals plus or minus square root of 55, that kind of sucks, right? I don't deal with that. Is there a better way to go about it? Maybe before I actually take a square root, let's, let's go back and, and continue isolating it. Instead of having 5x squared equals 55, can you get the x squared by itself first? Yeah. What are you going to do? Okay, let's do that. Make it look exactly like these problems before you work with it. Because now, I mean, no problem, really. We'll take a square root of both sides. Good enough? No, we do plus minus. Okay, I need your, your attention on, the, on those things when you're, when you're looking at these. Good enough? No. no. Not yet. Now it's good enough. I have x equals plus or minus the square root of 11. Can you break down, folks, the square root of 11? No. no. So you're going to have x equals two solutions, square root of 11 and negative square root of 11. Those are your solutions. They are numbers, right? They're just not rational numbers. Try one on your own, and then we'll continue. Are you done? Kind of quick, huh? Remember that this test isn't going to be hard because the math is really like brutal. It's going to be hard because you, you have to remember what to do when. This, this can go very fast if you really remember what, what you're doing here. So um, can you tell me, someone left hand side of the room over here, what's the first thing that I might want to do with our problem? Isolate. So I want 3x squared equals 30. Now, as before, we, we really don't want to deal with that one either, because if we take a square root of both sides, you're not just going to get 3x. You're going to get the square root of 3x, and that's going to be a little bit more difficult to deal with. Instead, let's go around that whole thing. Let's still continue to isolate our variable. We'll get x squared equals 10. Now, that's a lot better to deal with. That's something we can handle with no problems. What are you going to do now? 
So plus or minus. We need a plus or minus, and we're taking the square root to get rid of that square. We get x equals, notice how the, the square and the square root, those simplify. We get x equals root 10. Negative root 10. How many people got that far? Good deal. You're done. As far as you can get. Now, to put another example on the board, oh my gosh. Does that look anything like what we've been doing? No. Not really. Not really. But yet again, I want you to think of something. Firstly, could you distribute? You could distribute that, couldn't you? But you're going to get something kind of nasty, right? You know, this is a long expression equals a number. You'd have to get everything on one side, then factor. Is there a way we can go around that? Well, I want you to look at this one and look at the one that we've done over here. Over here on this side, the reason why this worked, understand the concept here. The reason why this worked is I had something being squared equals to a number, right? And how I got rid of a square was I did what to it? Took a square root. The reason why that happens is because with an equation, I can take the square root of both sides and the solutions are still equal, right? The, the, or, I'm sorry, each side of the equation is still equal because I know that when I raise both sides to an exponent, we're fine. So the reason why we can do this is because I had something squared equals a number. Look back at this example. Do I have something squared equal to a number? Yeah. yeah. I do. Yeah. Here I had something squared. I could take the square root of both sides. Let's see if that works. Let's see if over here, I've got something, the whole thing's being squared, isn't it? Tell me something, have you seen that before in this class? What would happen in something like that? Gone. Yeah, you can do that. Is this good enough to do it to just one side? No. Is it good enough to just take a square root like that? No. What else do you need? Do you see the similarity between that problem and this problem? Mm -hmm. Not sure if you do. I need, to, I need to have you see it because it's kind of like a key point for us. Yes, no? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so very similar. We had something squared equals a number. We still have something squared equals a number. We're still going to take a square root of both sides, and we're still going to have a plus or minus. Nothing's changed so far. In fact, the only thing I'm teaching you today so far is how to take a square root of both sides and include a plus or minus. That's it. Just get something squared by itself. So you all told me that that's going to go away. You're going to get what on the left-hand side, folks? Plus two. Oh, that's beautiful. Equals plus or minus. The Don't lose that plus or minus the square root of 18. Now, before you go any further, can you simplify this side like we did over there? In fact, we already had the square root of 18 today. That's 3 root 2. So we get x plus 2 equals plus or minus 3 root 2. By a show of hands, how many people okay getting that far? Good deal. How about this row? You guys feel okay with that? Are we done? No. Why? Subtract 2 because you have to isolate x. Well, I'm getting x myself. Now, the, the problem is if I do subtract 2, where do I subtract 2 from? Can I do it from here? No, from the left. This has a root, this one doesn't. So I can't just subtract 2 from 3. That doesn't happen. Because this is 3 root 2, right? I would need a like root, a like radical to do that. I don't have one. I have a whole number. I'm sorry, an integer. I've got something attached to a root. So the way you do this problem, you go, OK, over here I do have my x, no problem. But since I can't subtract this from anywhere, what I'm going to do is put it at the front of my problem. Negative 2. But I still have a plus minus. 3 root 2. Are you okay with that one? Are you sure? So that this 2, you can't subtract it from anywhere. It's got to go in front of your, your expression here. We have negative 2, negative 2, plus or minus, plus or minus, 3 root 2. You with me? Now, the reason why I had to write out both solutions here explicitly was so that you not be confused over here. What this says is you have negative 2 plus 3 root 2 and negative 2 minus 3 root 2. Do you still have two solutions? Yep. Write out both solutions. So negative 2, look, at, look how it goes. It's like, a, it's like a stream in two directions. You have negative 2, the upstream, and the downstream. So we have plus 3 root 2, negative 2 plus 3 root 2. We have negative 2 minus 
through 2. You have to give me both options here, the plus and the minus. Notice how this negative, if you look at the board here real quick, this negative doesn't change, does it? That's set in stone. It's this one that changes, the plus and minus. You have to give me both the plus and minus. <coughs> this has to go in the front? The, the integer will go in the front. Yeah, the roots are going to go in the back end. Let's try one on your own, and then we'll continue. Okay, so back up at our problem here. Do we have something squared equals to a number? Yes, yes no? Yes. yes. All right, that's great. That's what we want, right? We want something squared equals to a number. If we have something squared equals to a number, I know that I can take a square root of both sides of that equation as long as I still have a plus and minus. I know how many people got exactly that, including the plus and minus. Good, that plus and minus, again, that's one of the biggest things we're, we're learning in this section. Of course, the x square or the, the square and the square root, those are going to be gone. They eliminate their inverse operations. We have x plus 3 equals plus or minus the square root of 20. We've already seen the square root of 20 already today. If that's 4 times 5, that's going to be 2 root 5. So we get x plus 3 equals plus or minus 2 root 5. Did you make it that far? Now, we're not quite done. We need to get x by itself. The way we do that is we subtract or add whatever constant term we have. Here we're going to be subtracting 3 from both sides. Now, where this one doesn't have a radical like this does, it says I can't subtract that from the 2. There's nothing I can do to put those things together. So this is going to go in the front of our expression. We get x equals negative 3. Then we still have to have a plus or minus. So I want to be real sure that you didn't put the plus or minus here. You put it in front of that expression, in front of the 2 root 5, because you're going to be adding and subtracting that to this negative 3. The last thing we've got to do is write out both of our solutions, which we have two of. We do negative 3 plus 2 root 5 and negative 3 minus 2 root 5. Would you raise your hand if you made it all the way down to that? That's great. That's fantastic. You're there. You now have the idea down for this section. This is it. That's as, as far, well, not as far, but this is really the whole idea of this, this whole section. What you can do with these squares. Now, what's amazing is that this right here, that's a number, right? There's no variable there. That's a number. If you take negative 3 plus 2 times square root of 5 in your calculator, it's going to give you some decimal that doesn't add. If you took that and you plugged it in here, so basically if you added 3 to it, and then squared it, you know what? It's going to give you 20. In fact, you could probably see that right here if you really think about it. Take this expression. Follow me along here. Take this expression, plug it in. Add 3 to it. What's it going to do? It's going to get rid of that 3. You're going to have 2 root 5 squared. 2 root 5 squared, that would be 4. Square root squared is eliminating the square root. You get 4 times 5. What's 4 times 5? 20. It works. It's going to work here, too, because that negative, when you square it, becomes a positive. Interesting stuff here, right? That, this is a solution. Weird. Now, let's check out the next one. Next one. Do I have something squared equals to a number? Yep. That's what I need for this stuff to work. That's why we had to isolate a square, uh, x squared over, over here and over here. That's why we had to isolate those things. Right here, I had it isolated, so we could take a square root of both sides. Of course, we need a plus or minus. We go, oh, we did nice. We're going to get 3x minus 1. That square and the square root are going to be gone. Right hand. Oh, wait a second. Can I take the square root of a negative number? Yeah. Uh, no solution, right? No solution. Yeah. I, I right. Have you just dealt with yeah. square roots and negatives? Yeah. Yeah. Don't forget about i. If you, if you forget about i, 
you can't see the problem correctly. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, you, you take a square root of both sides, just like you would before. However, there's never, ever going to be no solution for you. Ever. Because you can now take the square root of a negative number. You with me? You're never going to be like, yay, no solution. No, it doesn't happen mm -hmm. anymore. All right? Mm -hmm. Section 10.7 was great because it was not, not really that hard. It was also kind of great because now you can deal with every problem you, you see. So where we're going to get 3x minus 1, that's not an issue. On the right-hand side, you're still going to have a plus or minus. You cannot forget about that. What's the square root of negative 4, please? 2i. Negative gives you i. Square root of 4 is 2. 2i. You okay with the 2i? Hopefully, because you just hopefully did all your homework. Otherwise, all your homework is probably going to be wrong. Uh, are you done? No. Not quite. you got, you got to solve for x. Tell me over here on this side, what's the first thing you're going to do to solve for x? Does this 1 get added to that 2? No. So I have 3x equals 1 plus or minus, don't forget about the plus or minus, 2i. 1 plus or minus 2i. So far so good? Yep. Are you done now? No, no. This row, tell me something. What do you do? If I divide by 3, that means I divide the whole thing by 3. True? Yes. X equals 1 plus or minus 2i over 3. Now that might look a little nasty to you, but I want you to really think about it. Look at what happens. In fact, don't, don't do this on your paper. But have you seen something like that before? Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you remember dealing with those complex numbers in 10.7? What you did with this particular problem? Instead of 1 plus 2i over 3, you're going to write 1 third plus 2 third i. You with me? Yeah. I showed you that. Now, we don't just have one of those. We've got two of them. You have 1 third plus 2 thirds i. You're going to have 1 third minus 2 thirds i. 1 third plus 2 thirds i. I'm doing two things here. Not only am I splitting up my fraction, one-third, two-third, I'm also going to be splitting up my plus-minus. One-third plus two-thirds I, one-third minus two-thirds I. So two things, two solutions, and we split it up into complex numbers. Do you have complex numbers now? Yeah, I can. So you got real part, one-third, one-third, imaginary part, positive two-thirds I, negative two-thirds I. I'm going to feel okay with what we just done. Good. Now I'm going to try, once you try one on your own, so don't forget about the I here. Did you solve it? Pretty quick, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Not too bad when you really get the hang of this stuff. So when you, not these ones. You're not solving these yet. We're solving that one. Solving that one. Uh, first step, true or false? First step is to take the square root of both sides. Did you see that? What are you going to do first? 
Ah, subtract 2. Why? Because we know just like before, you need to isolate something squared. So even though we didn't do an example like this, hopefully you saw through that. So I can't just take a square root because this right here fails. That right there allows me to do nothing with the problem if I take a square root of both sides. So instead, we go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to isolate that square. I want to get 5x minus 2 squared equals negative 9. Do you get negative 9? That looks a lot better than me. That right there says, okay, I've got something squared. Let's take a square root of both sides, and we're not going to neglect the plus and minus because that gives us our two solutions that we know we're going to have, even though they're going to be complex numbers here. On the left-hand side, we get 5x minus 2. On the right-hand side, you get plus or minus 3i. Did you make it that far, folks? Yes. Good deal. Now, we're not quite done. We just have some basic algebra to do. We're going to add 2. Now, while it can't be added to the 3i, we're going to have 5x equals 2 plus or minus 3i. We'll just put it in the front of that expression. It is a square root after all, just like before. It's a square root of negative 1. So we're going to put the number in front of it. We just now have a plus or minus. If we divide by 5 to get x by itself, we have a situation on this side where 2 plus or minus 3i all divided by 5. It does give the give us our two solutions because of the plus minus, but we also want to write it like we write any other complex number, which is the real part plus or minus imaginary part. That's our two-fifths plus three-fifths i. That's the first one. Two-fifths plus three-fifths i. And two-fifths minus three-fifths i. Notice how the number in front does not change its sign ever. It's just the plus or minus which dictates whether you're going to positive or negative or plus or minus in this case. Would you raise your hand feel comfortable doing what we just did? Are you sure? Yeah. Now the question is, all this stuff works, this is great, it's fantastic. It's something squared equals a number when you take a square root of both sides. But look at this one. Will that work here? Can I take a square root of both sides? Even if I were to subtract 16, subtract 8x and get the x squared by itself, do you notice I'd have an x on both sides of my, that'd be horrible because you can't ever isolate that. We need a slightly different way to go about it. Or, or we need to change this to look like this. That's what we need to do. We're going to learn how to do that right now. Now, something kind of nice about all three of these, I'll bet you a million dollars I could factor these in less than five seconds for each one of them. You don't, you don't believe me? You're a math teacher. Oh, of course I am. Plus, I've already been taught this lesson like 18 times, so of course I know how to do that. But do you want to take the bet? No. Even, no. If, even if I didn't know these ones, would you want to take that bet? No. No, because I know something you don't know right now. I should know a lot that you don't know. Just kidding. That was a jerk thing to say. Just kidding. Um, no. What I know is that if this number is the square of half of this number, it makes a perfect square trinomial, and you can factor it very quickly. You could actually do that with a diamond problem, couldn't you? You have 8 on the top, 16 on the bottom, that's 4 and 4. You'd have negative 6 on the top, you'd have 9 on the bottom, that's negative 3, negative 3. You'd have, whoa, that's kind of a weird one. We'll talk about that one in a second. But check this out. I know for a fact that if this is what I've given, x plus 4 squared is what I'm going to get out of it. I know if that's what I'm given, x minus 3 squared so I'm going to get out of it. I know if that's what I'm given, we're going to do this one together in just a second. I want you to look at the pattern here. There's a relationship between this number and this number, this number and this number, this number and this number. Take this number right here, the middle, middle number, divide it by 2. What do you get? 4. Then square it. Good. Take this number right here, divide it by 2. What do you, no, it's not 3. It's negative 3. Then square it. Square negative 3. What do you get? Okay. Take this number right here. Follow me along. Take this number right here. Divide it by 2. 3 over 2. I want the 3 over 2. You see the 3 over 2? Square it. Right? Now, look at, look, at, look at this. Take this number. Divide it by 2. What do you get? Take this number. Divide it by 2. What do you get? Take this number, divide it by 2, what do you get? You with me on 3 over 2, positive? That is your factorization. If this number 
is half this number squared. So basically 4 squared. If this number is half this number squared, if this number is half this number squared, it's called a perfect square trinomial. And if it is, we can factor it just like we did right here. Here's the problem. You're not just going to be given these things. You're going to be given things like this. Now, even were I to get the 1 on the other side, it's not going to be a perfect square trinomial. Because if I did, I'd have x squared plus 8x minus 1 equals 0. Is this number half this number squared? No, because no, we know that's 16. Here's the idea. What we're going to be doing here, here's the second key point for you. The first key point was very easy. You take a square root of both sides, you have a plus and minus, that's it. Here's the second key point for this section. Second key point is, we're going to try to make this side a perfect square trinomial. That's the whole idea. So what we're going to be doing, listen carefully, you're going to force, don't you like forcing something? <coughs> Conquer this problem. Ow. You're going to force this side to work like this side. This does. You're going to force this one to be one of these. Here's how you do it. You get everything to one side, all your x terms to one side, and the constant to the other side. We have that right now, yes? You look at your x term. You look at your x term. Take half of it. How much is it? Five. Square that. Everyone do this and say it out loud. Take half this number. Four. Square. This is an equation, right? You're going to add it to both sides. And you're like, why? Why? I don't know. I don't get it. Why am I doing that? Watch. Watch what happens. If I add it to this side, I get x squared plus 8x plus 16. You follow me? If I add it to this side, I get how much? 17. Now you go, well, why, why do I want 17? I don't care about that side. Miss your question? I don't care about the 16. I want you to look at the 8. Take half of it. How much is that? Now square four. That's what I'm adding to both sides. I'm going to write the steps out in, well, probably next time, but I'll, I'll write explicit steps. I want to preview this right now, though, okay? So we're, we're taking half that number, we're squaring it, we're adding it to both sides because it's an equation. You have to add something to both sides, yeah? That right there, by necessity, would be a perfect square trinomial. And you're going to factor it. A perfect square trinomial will be factored the same way this was. How we factored every one of these is we divided that by 2, and you put it here. So what number, can you tell me what number is going to go there? Where are we getting the 4? Well, look at, look. Where we got the 4 is the same way we got the 16. You divide this number by 2, right? You divide that number by 2. You square it, it gets added. It also goes right there, squared. Hey, does that look familiar? Yeah. That's exactly what we've been doing. Okay, so as soon as you complete the square, you have something we just did. That's why we did this. So you can go, oh, you know what? I take a square root with a plus or minus on both sides. I get x plus 4 equals plus or minus square root of 17. I subtract 4 from both sides. And I get x equals negative 4 plus or minus square root of 17. That's negative 4 plus root 17. That's negative 4 minus root 17. I get my two solutions like I wanted. We're done. How many felt pretty good about what we talked about? Now, we are going to do a whole bunch more examples like this next time. So if you're like, oh my gosh. Well, go back and watch the video. I'll try to post this today. Uh, we'll, we'll be on YouTube today. Um, but go back and watch that. Check out some of those problems. Again, especially that one. And we'll cover this, uh, start on this tomorrow. So we're looking at how to complete a square on a quadratic equation. Of course, what makes an equation quadratic, somebody? The square, yeah. If you have something squared, that means it's a quadratic. And we're learning how to complete the square. In other words, we're learning how to complete a perfect square trinomial so that we can factor it. So in our example, I did this one last time, but I did it very, very fast. 
and I want to go through the steps and show you exactly what I did in order to solve it. Do you remember that example from last time? I hope you do, from yesterday. The first step you're going to do to complete the square is already set up for you in this problem. Here's what you need to do. When you get an equation and you're trying to complete the square, which I will give you explicit directions uh, to do that on your test. I'll say solve this by completing the square. If you solve it by any other means, I'm not going to give you credit for it. I want to see completing the square. The first thing you need to do, get all the x terms on one side and the constant or the number on the other side. Do you guys see that that's satisfied right here? Yes. X terms on one side, constant on the other side. That's the first step you need to do. So number one, set the equation so the x terms are on one side and the constant is on the other side. Okay, x terms on one side, constant on the other. We're going to verify that's already done. We've got x's over here. We've got the number over there. That's great. That's what we're looking for. So at least step one is done for us. The next step you're going to do, you're going to make sure that the coefficient, what's the coefficient mean? What's that mean? The number. Good, the number in front of the variable. The coefficient of the x squared term. I want you to look up there on the board, find the x squared term, find the coefficient. The coefficient has to be one. Is the coefficient one here? Good. So we're looking right here. If this thing is anything besides a 1, you're going to have to divide it out. Otherwise, this process doesn't work. You with me? So step 1, x terms on one side, constant on the other. Step 2, you're going to make sure the coefficient of the x squared term is 1. If not, you might have to divide. So that's step 2. <coughs> Make sure coefficient of x squared term is 1, divide if necessary. So we look over here, well, our, our x terms are on one side, x squared has a coefficient of 1, so we're set. The first two steps are already done for us, that's great. Now, here's the next and most important step. What you're going to do is you're going to look at the x term. Look at the x term right now, what's the x term? Positive or negative? Positive. 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 Okay. So we're looking at the x term, you're looking at that coefficient, the positive 8. What you're going to do is take the square of half of that number. Not the square root, the square. So you take half that number, what's half that number? <coughs> then you square it, you get, and you're going to add that to both sides. So what I'm going to write down here is add the square of half the x term to both sides. It's an equation, you have to do it to both sides. You can't just do it to one side. Hope you're focused up here. Are you focused up here? You're going to take half of that, square it, add it to both sides. That's step three. Add the square, not the square root, the square of one half the x term. Of course, I mean the coefficient of the x term. I don't mean including the x, I mean just the x term. So maybe I should actually write that. Okay, so you set up your equation, x terms are on one side. You've got the constant on the other side. You're going to look at the coefficient of the x squared term. You're going to make sure that's 1. That's already done for you. Now is the, 
the money step. This is where you, you do the problem, actually. You're going to add half, always add, never subtract, always add half the square, I'm sorry, the square of half of the coefficient of the x term on both sides. So you look at your x term, you go, okay, my x term is 8x. The coefficient is positive 8. I take half of that, that is 4, and then I square it. Notice you have to take half of it and then square it. Don't square it and then take half of it. Okay, that would be 32. We don't want 32. We want your 16. Do you see the 16, how I'm getting that? So you take 8 <coughs> divided by 2 squared. That's what you're doing. 8 divided by 2 squared. That's going to give you 16. And since it's an equation, you can't just add it to one side. I mean, clearly, we're going to have to add it here. But it is an equation, which means what you do to one side, you absolutely have to do to the other. Otherwise, it's like a teeter-totter, and you put someone really heavy on one side and, and not anybody over here. The teeter-totter is going to go, right? It's not going to be equal anymore. So to level this thing out, you've got to do it to both sides. On the left-hand side, this is how we got the x squared plus 8x plus 16. On the right-hand side, we do our 1 plus 16. That gives us... 17. By show of hands, how many people feel okay getting that far? Can you follow the steps and see that these are our steps? Okay. After this, it really goes back down to factoring and then solving. So on our left-hand side, what we can do, we can actually factor that because right now, this thing is a perfect square trinomial. This is the square of half that number. We know we can factor this. So step number four is you're going to factor because the left hand or well, because one of these sides will be a perfect square trinomial. So I'm going to put factor and put in parentheses. That's because we have a perfect square trinomial. This side is well, how we want it. <coughs> perfect square trinomial. That's actually what completing the square means. It means you're completing the perfect square trinomial. That's it. You guys ready for the next step? Now, once you do this, I'll give you a little hint here. If you don't remember exactly how to factor this, use the diamond problem. It's going to work every time. Okay? The diamond problem will work on this every time. You're just going to get the same number twice. You're going to get 4 and 4 here. Do you see it? That's how a perfect square trinomial is always going to be factored. Because what you're looking for is to get something squared. Right here, if you notice with the diamond problem, you get x plus 4, x plus 4. Are you with me? You would get x plus 4 squared. That's what we need to do. Or you remember what I told you last time. The number that you found here by dividing by 2, that, that number right here, this 4, this is how this will be factored, x plus 4 squared. Where's the 4 coming from? It's not magic. It's not magic. You're taking this number dividing it by 2, and you get that. It's, basic, it's the same exact thing you did here. You divided 8 by 2, and then you squared it. So the number you get before you square it is exactly the number you're going to factor with. Nod your head if you're okay with that. The number you get before you square it is exactly the number you're going to factor with. <coughs> the reason why I say that is because sometimes it's going to be difficult to do a, a diamond problem with these because they're not going to be whole numbers. They're going to be fractions. So if you remember this process, it's a lot easier to do that. Once you factor it, man, you're home free. Uh, you got this thing down because it's exactly what we conquered uh, at the beginning part of this section, right? We had something squared equals a number. So the last step, step number five, I know it's way down here, but you're going to solve just like you did before. So when we look at this, we go, oh, yeah, something squared. Man, we've mastered that already. We're going to take a square root of both sides, and we're certainly not going to neglect what? What do we need? Plus and minus. Make sure you have that. Why do you need a plus and minus, please? Two answers. We're going to get those two solutions. So here we're going to get our x plus 4 equals plus or minus the square root of 17. I know I've already done this problem for you. I just wanted you to notice along with the steps how it works. Of course, we'd subtract 4 from both sides. So we get negative 4. Notice the negative 4 is coming first, and then we get the plus or minus the square root of 17. And then, as a matter of fact, this does give us our two solutions. We're going to follow this just like a stream with two directions. We have the plus and the minus root 17.
And that's it. It's as good as we can do on that. Raise your hand if you feel okay with that problem right there. Pretty good about it. Okay, what we're going to do now, I'm going to show you one more, but I'm going to have you do most of the steps on it. And then we'll talk about two other differences that can happen. You see, right now, this was kind of nice because, well, a couple things, a couple things are nice about this. Number one, that's a one. <coughs> if that's a, not a one, you have some work to do. Number two, that number's even. If that number's even, that's nice. Why? You're dividing by two, right? If that number's odd, you have a fraction. Do you see it? Okay, so we're going to look at those two cases in just a bit. We'll do one more to really get the hang of it, and then we'll look at those. Okay. This might be an exciting day. I've had way too much caffeine this morning. I should drink some coffee. Isn't that great? You guys are in for a day. Okay, like I said, we're going to do it together, but I'm going to let you do most of the steps. So the first step here, what would you guys do? Read the first, read the first step. What are you going to do here? Hmm? Add three. <coughs> Why? Okay, good. And we want that constant on the other side. So I, I know I said X terms here, but of course that means, you know, any variable terms. Do the first step now. Go for it. Should take you about five seconds. All right, so no, step number one says you're going to get the y's or, or your variable terms on one side and the constant on the other. So we need to add three here and we get y squared plus 4y equals three. You with me so far? Only way this process works is because what's happening here, this is not a perfect square trinomial as it is. You're going to force it to become one by removing the constant and working with this side alone. Now, next step is, well, you should be looking to see if our coefficient of the x squared term, or in this case the y squared term, is one. Is that step satisfied? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great. There's no number up front. That'd be awesome. If there was, we'd have to divide right now. The third step is you're going to add the square of half the coefficient of the x term to both sides. So right now, don't say anything out loud, just I want you to identify the y term here. The x term is now the, the y term. Identify the y term. You got it? <coughs> Take half of it, then square it in your head or on the side of the paper, just like what we did here, and add that number to both sides. Do that now. Remember, it's equation. It's got to be both sides, not just one side. Both sides. Y term, half of it, square it. How much did you get? Did you add four to both sides? To both sides? So here, sure, four. Here, also four. It's an equation. You got y squared equals four y, oh, I'm sorry, y squared plus 4y equals two mistakes in a row. <laughs> too much caffeine. Too much caffeine. That's right. Lots of fours <coughs> floating around. Y squared plus 4y plus 4 equals 7. Do you have that on your paper? Okay. The next step is you're going to factor that. Now, the left side, it has to be a perfect square trinomial. That's what this pr process does. So right now, leave the right side alone for a second. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Just leave it there. Left side, factor that. Go ahead and do that now, if you haven't done it already. Now, you can use a diamond problem for this. It will work. However, I want you to move past that. Notice perfect square trinomials always factor this way so as something squared, and it's pretty easy to get the second number. So what I'm looking for in your paper right now is something squared equals 7. I know that's going to be a y. What number is this one going to be? Two. two. Good. Yeah, two. Because you take this, you divide by two with the sign, you're going to get plus two. So far, so good. Okay. Now you should be home free. Finish off the rest of the way.
Okay, so what you should have done is realize that we have something squared equals a constant. We're going to take a square root of both sides. And of course, you have to have the plus and minus. That's going to be your two solutions. <coughs> Left hand side is kind of nice. We get y plus 2 equals right hand side. We get plus or minus the square root of 7. We would simplify the square root of 7 if possible. However, right now, square root of 7, you can't simplify this prime number. We'd subtract 2 from both sides. That's going to go in front of our plus and minus. And that gives us two solutions. We get negative 2 plus the square root of 7. We get negative 2 minus the square root of 7. And that's it. How many people made it that far? Good. Just starting to really get it in your head? Good. All right. Now, we're going to look at two more examples today. I want you to know something about these, though. I'm going to tell you how to do them. But I'm also going to say this with like a little asterisk. If you get this type of problem, I'm going to give you a different way to do it in about 10 minutes. Okay, I'm going to give you maybe an easier way to do this. So here's the, the point, I guess. Uh, if you're working with the completing the square, the completing the square is about to give us a nice formula that works universally for any quadratic. Typically, here's how people solve quadratic equations. They solve them with factoring, which I already taught you how to do. Then they solve them with the quadratic formula. They typically don't solve them with completing the square because in examples like this, you deal with fractions and a whole bunch of other stuff where you really might not want to do it. Right, so really there's two options for you. Well, there's three options, but one of them, this one, we don't really use, okay? You've got factoring, you've got quadratic formula, which you don't know yet, I'm about to teach you, and then you have completing the square. The completing the square works really nice for what I'm going to call easy problems. Problems where there's no number up front, and problems where this one is even. You with me? Because then you don't have to do anything with this, and this you can divide by two just fine. It works out real nice. You got it? When you start getting something like this, we're going to go through this problem right now, but we're going to see that you're going to end up getting some fractions, and that, that causes a little foul up for some people. You can do it. I'm going to prove to you that you can do this. This works all the time. But I'm also going to tell you that in just a little while, I'm going to give you a, maybe a better method to use that works universally without really having to think too hard about it. You got this? So let's, let's go. Uh, what do you do first? Good. Okay. X's and then constant. So subtract 2 on both sides, you get x squared minus 5x equals negative 2. So far so good? All right. Next thing you do is, well, we have x terms on one side, the constant on the other side. You check what? What do you want? The coefficient. What now? The coefficient has to be 1. Yeah, OK. So is it? Yes. Is the coefficient 1? Mm -hmm. Great. Step 2 satisfied. We haven't had one yet where it's not. Step three is, well, where, where all the money's made on the problem right here. You take half of the x term, then you square it, and then you add to both sides. Here's how you do this. This is your x term. I know it's negative. The coefficient of x term is negative 5. Are you with me on that? You take half of it. How do you take half of something? What was that? So you agree that taking half of something means dividing it by 2. Is that half the coefficient of the x term? Mm -hmm. Now, it's an odd number. It's not going to divide it evenly. I don't want you to put negative 2.5 or 2.5. That's going to be really awful if we don't want to do that. So you're going to leave it just like this. And then you're going to square it. This is half the middle term, the x term, squared. You with me? Yes, no? You guys over here? Okay. What do you get when you square that? Positive or negative? Positive. That's kind of the key right there. You're going to get a positive number. 25 over 4. See where the 25 over 4 is coming from? That's what you're going to add to both sides. So on the left-hand side, here's what you have. x squared minus 5x plus 25 over 4. Remember, this is an equation. You have to add that to both sides. Negative 2 plus 25 over 4. Here's why, as you can see, this is why people shy away from this method when you have a non even odd number. Can you see why people shy away from this method? Because they go, oh, crap. That's a lot of fractions right there. Can you still do it? Of course you can. Of course. Can you combine these two fractions? We had negative 2 plus 25 over 4. This is like negative 8 over 4 plus 25 over 4. 
common denominator there, folks, common denominator. You're going to get negative 8 over 4 plus 25 over 4. That's going to be, what, 17 over 4? Yes, no? Student in my head. I've been known to make mistakes once in a while. <coughs> Someone double check my work. Is it 17 over 4? Okay. Now, the left-hand side, I want you, I want you to follow up here. Can you factor that with a diamond problem? Probably not, unless you're really, really good at fractions, right? Here's the idea. The, the perfect square trinomial is nice because it's easy to factor. I know this is going to be of this form. I know you can have x. I know you can have square. It's just this number. But tell you what, what you're going to put here is already on the board. Can you find it? Yeah, it's the number that you had before you squared it. It's already written on the board. Do you see it? It's the number you had before you squared it. What is the number you had before you squared it? Negative minus 5 over 2. That's what you had before you squared it. That's what you put here. That's what you put right there. So again, the process. Is it any harder? No, it's not harder. It's just you deal with fractions. So the idea is Get your constant on one side, x terms on the other, no problem. Make sure your coefficient is 1. It is. Great. Take half of this term, that's right here, <coughs> square it, we got that, that's 25 over 4, add that to both sides as an equation, it's got to be added to both sides. Here we're going to add these together, they need a common denominator, I didn't show you that, I didn't show the work, you would do this on your own. You get 17 over 4 on the right hand side, that's just adding fractions. The left-hand side is where the work happens. Left-hand side, this has to be a perfect square trinomial. In order to factor that, all you have to do is take x and then half of this term. That's negative 5 over 2. In fact, you've already written that. That's right there. Squared. From here on out, you do the same work. We've got something squared equals a number. How do you get rid of something squared equals a number? What was that? I hope you all know it. What do you do now? with a plus or minus. On this left side, the square and the square root are inverse operations, they're gone. You get x minus 5 halves equals plus or minus the square root of 17 over 4. So far so good? I'm going to do a little razzle dazzle here. You ready for the razzle dazzle? It's actually not razzle dazzle, you can do it. A square root is the same thing as a, of a fraction, same thing as the square root of the numerator over the square root of the denominator, right? So I'm going to change this instead of square root of 17 over 4 as the square root of 17 over 2. Do you see it? With no square root on the denominator. You, re you ready for that one? So this step is going to be, move over here. x minus 5 halves equals plus or minus, still didn't need that, square root of 17 over 2, like that. Where did that 2 come from? I'm taking the square root of 4. Square root of 4 gives you 2. There's one last step. I have not solved for x. How do I solve for x here? Good. So I get x equals 5 halves plus or minus square root of 17 over 2. Are you okay with that one? Yes or no? Yes. You sure? You sure? So I've just added five halves. I already did this square root of 17 over 2. I still have a plus and minus. That plus and minus is going to give you two solutions. However, I want you to look at that. Do you have a common denominator? Yes. So I could write this as, watch closely, I have a common denominator, 5 plus or minus the square root of 17 over 2. 5 plus or minus the square root of 17 over 2. Can you follow that? Now there's only one more thing I need to do. I need to write both my solutions. Remember, it's like a string. You're going to do both directions. 5 plus the square root of 17 over 2 and 5 minus the square root of 17 over 2. Amazingly, these two things are actually solutions. They're numbers. There's no variables there. They're numbers. You put that in a calculator, you get some decimal. 5 plus square root of 17 over 2 gives you a number. 5 minus square root of 17 over 2 gives you a number. That's weird, right? But you plug those in here, it's going to work out for you. 
Now, this problem, you would not be able to factor it with the diamond problem. It's not going to work. You put negative 5 at the top, 2 at the bottom, you spend all your life trying to find those. It's never going to work. Okay, so we needed something else. Completing the square gives us one of those options. How many people feel okay with the completing the square idea? Good. I'm going to give you something uh, on your test that looks similar to this. It's probably going to have an even number there. I just want you to get the hang of the process, all right? Now, on your homework, of course, you're going to have some odds. Now you know how to do it. Is it a little more difficult than an even number right there? Yeah. Yeah, it's a little more difficult. You've got to do a little bit of work with it. Now, I'm going to show you one more. We're not going to go all the way through it. But I just want to show you how to handle it. Let's suppose I gave you something like 3x squared minus 12x plus 1 equals 0. Your first, what's your first step? You should be able to handle this at this point. What's your first step? Okay, so constant gone. Well, move to the other side at least. So far so good? What's the next step? Ah, so this is different than any other example we've had so far. This one doesn't have the second step done already. Make sure the coefficient of the x squared term is 1. Here's how you do that. Coefficient of the x squared term is 3. We want to divide everything by 3. Notice this includes everything, even the other side. Everything. Here, this is why you do this. You're going to get x squared. Here, what are you going to get here? Minus, okay. And on the right hand side, you get what? Negative one third. Ah, okay. So negative one third. Now, does it look like something you can handle? You do have a fraction here, but that's not a problem. It'll be very similar to the last problem. That's even. That's kind of nice, right? Tell me. Think about it. I'll give you 10 seconds on your own. Think about, don't say it out loud. I want everyone thinking this. Think about what you're going to add to both sides right now. Just think about it. What are you going to add to both sides? Plus four. Yeah. Not two. Plus four. Four. Not 16. Four. You're taking this, you're dividing it by two. Negative two, I'm sorry, negative four over two, and then you're squaring it. I want you to write that out. Negative two squared gives you positive four. You're adding four to both sides. Do you follow? After you do that, you'd have x squared minus 4x plus 4 equals negative 1 third plus 4. You're going to somehow add those together. You get a common denominator. It'll be 12 over 3. Add that, you get 11 over 3. That's going to be on the right-hand side. On the left-hand side, you should be able to factor that. It'll be x something squared. The something right here, it's already on your paper. How much is it? Is it plus 2? Minus 2? Two? Minus 2. <coughs> Look right here. This gives you what goes right there. I don't want you to get hung up on the fractions right now and do that later. I want you to look at the left-hand side of the problem. You should be good on your fractions. If not, we'll work on them later. Uh, but right here, are you okay getting this part and this part? Raise your hand if you're okay with that. Okay, if not, do you have any questions on that? After that, you take a square root of both sides. The squ notice how the square root of 3, that's not going to really work out that well for you. Uh, this is why we're going to use the quadratic formula in just a bit to solve these problems a little bit more simply. I just want you to know that it is possible. You take a square root of both sides, you're going to add 2 to both sides. You'll get the square root of 11 over the square root of 3. You would have to rationalize the denominator. By the way, a lot of you on your, your homework with uh, this problem, when you go down to 1 over i, some of those answers in the back of the book are a little bit different because what they're doing, whenever you have something over i, notice you technically have something over a square root. Do you see that? They're rationalizing. How you rationalize is you multiply a square root times itself. What this would do is give you i squared, that's negative 1. So you get i over negative 1 or negative 1. So whenever your problems are a little bit different in the back of the book, try rationalizing. You with me? You've probably done it right. You just need to rationalize, and that will give you the correct answer. Okay, I'm going to end here. Um, I just need to tell you that if you have this problem, let's say this is like a negative 5. Do you, could you still do it? 
Is it going to be a little tougher? Yeah, you have fractions of three. Okay? You, you, you subtract one. Notice? You divide by three. You'd have one third, you'd have negative five thirds. You take half of that. Oh my gosh, that's like negative five six. Then you'd square. That's 25 over 36. And add that to both sides. That gets a little rough. How many people understood how to do the, the complete the square with something like this or something where that's an even number? Feel okay about that? When you start getting into something like that, this kind of sucks. All right, this is very hard to do. It takes a lot of work, it has a lot of fractions, and a lot of mistakes are being made. Would you like to find out a better way to do it? Sure. Me too, because I don't want to have to grade your work on that. All right, because that sucks. Uh, so instead... All right, well, you guys get some bonus time on how to complete the square. I'm going to show you a slightly different technique on how to do this uh, than I've shown in the videos or that I've shown in class. Um, this is going to kind of help you see how to factor a perfect square trinomial very easily from our, our third step on when you find the square of half of our x coefficient. So here's what I'm talking about. Let's, we have three examples up here. I'll start with the first one on the far left. When you look at this, we realize that the first two steps are, are not really completed yet. We have to do the first step, which is to get that three on the other side. We're going to add that to both sides. So I'll get y squared plus 4y equals 3. I'm leaving myself a little extra space there. That way I know I'm going to add the square of half the middle term. Now here's what I was talking about in class for those of you who were there, and if you weren't there, this is something new for you. What we're going to do is we're going to do two steps basically as one. So we're looking at the, the x coefficient. That would be the positive 4. What we do is we take half of that. Half of 4 is 2. So right now, before you actually complete the square, you can go ahead to your next step and complete the factoring as you're doing it. So when I do that half of 4 equals 2 thing, this is what it means. I think, okay, I'm taking the x coefficient, that's 4, divided in half, that's going to give you 2. I know automatically that my very next step is going to be factored as y plus 2. y plus 2? Well, Half of this is positive 2. I know that's going to be a y. That is going to give me the 2, and then I know for certain it's going to be squared. I know that because we're going to be creating that perfect square trinomial, and those always factor as y plus or minus half the middle term squared. So now we can go back to our first step. So we're basically doing two steps as one. So we're taking half of this, that goes there. Now square that number, you're always going to get a positive. Any number squared is positive. I'm going to put that here and there. It's got to go on both sides because we have an equation. What you do to one side, you have to do the other, otherwise it'll be unbalanced. So again, here's our steps. Add the 3. Take half of this number, write it in your next step right now. Don't go any further. Write it in your next step right now as y plus or minus, depending on whether this is positive or negative, y in this case plus 2 squared, and then we square that number and we add that to both sides. From here, you're home free. You're going to take the square root of both sides. Don't forget your plus and minus. Subtract 2, and you're done. You should write those answers out explicitly as two different solutions. Let's try that in a couple more examples just to really get a feel of this. Uh, you'll see this in this one. This is a little bit more difficult because we don't have an even x coefficient, and it's negative, so I wanted you to see that as well. So our first step, of course, is subtract 2. We're going to do that. Now, we've got to look at the x coefficient, which in this case is negative 5. How you take half of any number is you divide it by 2. 
Now, of course, you can't really divide by 5 by 2 and get a whole number, so we're going to leave it not as 2 and a half, not as 2.5, as negative 5 over 2. So this is where our next step comes in. So right here, you're thinking, okay, I know I need to take half of this. I know I'm okay because my coefficient out here is 1. That's great. That's what we want to have happen. But the very next step I'm going to do is I'm going to take my x minus, because I have a negative, and I'm going to take half of this number. That's 5 over 2. And I know it's going to be squared. Now, as soon as we do that, well, we're going to take that negative 5 halves, we're going to square it. If we square negative 5 halves, you are going to get a positive, which means we have to add it. Squaring the 5 gives you 25. Squaring the 2 gives you 4. So we're going to add 25 over 4, not just to one side, but to both sides. Sorry, I forgot the negative there. As soon as we do that, this part would be very hard to factor if you just looked at it. If you look at that and go x squared minus 5x plus 25 over 4, how am I going to factor that? Well, you don't have to worry about it because we know for certain that's a perfect square trinomial. We just created it. So if you've just created it, you already know how it's going to factor. That's why we do these two steps at once. We do this one, we say, okay, we'll just take half that number, put it right there. Square it, you got it. That is the factorization, so you don't have to really think on how you would factor it. We've already done it. We're, we're kind of like working backwards here. Then we're going to do this side. Yeah, it's fractions. Use your calculator. Do whatever you want. This is going to be 17 over 4. And after that, again, we're pretty much home free. We're going to take a square root of both sides. Don't forget the plus and minus. The 2 comes from the square root of 4. Add 5 halves. Since we have a common denominator, we can make one fraction out of that. And there's your two solutions. Of course, again, you'd write them out explicitly. OK, the ne next one quite a bit harder. The reason is, not only do we have a negative in the middle uh, as our x coefficient, it is also odd, and we have to divide by 2. So here's the process for doing this, this problem. First, of course, we've got to get rid of that 7. All constants must be on the other side. The next thing you do, this completing the square process only works if your x squared coefficient is 1. So basically you don't have another, another number besides 1 out there. If you do, you have to divide. So here we're going to divide every single term by 2. That gets rid of that coefficient. left myself a little extra space because I know I'm going to add something there. Now, here's where this really helps you on the next step. The next step would be take half of this, coefic of this coefficient of x, that's negative 5 halves. How you take half of a fraction, just multiply the denominator by 2. That cuts it in half. Think about it. 1 half times any fraction. 1 times the numerator is the numerator. 2 times the denominator is 2 times the denominator. So half of this fraction will complete the square, that's x, this will be a minus, is 5 over, not 2, but 4, just 2 times 2. Now we can square negative 5 fourths. So we've taken half of it, now we square it and add it to both sides. This squared is 25 over 16. At this point, this is all this is what I'm going to do for you. At this point, you have something squared. That's great. Combine these fractions. You'll get a fraction, and you'll be right here this step. Then you'll take a square root of it. 
then you'll add five fourths to both sides and see what you get out of that thing. That's that would be the final step on this this problem. So here, just making it down to here is the tough part. After this, you have basically the same idea. Now, I would like to show you also how this helps you in creating the equation for the quadratic formula. So let's look at this, and we're, we're going to do the proof right right now. So we'll be using the same exact idea of completing the square, only now we're going to do it on a general quadratic equ uh, equation. So what did we do before? Get rid of the c, the constant. So we'll subtract that. Then we got rid of any coefficient in front of x squared. That's the a. We'll divide. If you divide by a, you get b over ax and negative c over a. We've divided every term by a. That's here, that's here, and that's there. Now, here's where that second, that, that special step that I showed you about really comes in handy. We know that this is going to be able to factor as something squared as long as we complete the square. So here's how we did it. We look at our middle term, that's the x term. Take the coefficient b over a, well what's half of b over a? b over 2a. Remember, multiply the denominator by 2. Here's b over a, here's half of that. Now when we square it, we get b over 2a squared, let's not be fancy about it, let's just put square and b over 2a squared. This looks ridiculous to factor if you're not used to factoring, so it, it, if you look at that, it's going to be hard. Using that special step that we do, do it at the same time, it's very easy to factor. This is this. On the right hand side, we'll do some fancy math. We'll do negative c over a plus b squared over 4a squared. We'll find a common denominator. We'll make one fraction out of that now that we do have a common denominator. We'll take a square root of both sides. I'm going to take the square root of the top and leave it. The square root of the denominator, square root of 4 is 2, square root of a squared is a, and there's only two more steps. We're going to add, subtract this fraction on both sides. What we're going to end up with is Notice that we have a common denominator. That means just like in the previous problems, we can put this together as one fraction. And that right there is a quadratic formula as done by completing the square. Hopefully that helps you, especially this step right here. That should really help. Uh, make sure you're doing both this, those equations at the same time that will make it so you don't really worry about the factoring. It's built into the problem for you.